Hello, this is the tutorial for Johnny, which is a stereo multi-wave tremolo effect for iPad. I'm going to go over my setup here real quick. I've got just uh, my electric guitar connected to an Apogee Jam interface, which is then connected to the iPad. Uh, I'm using Audio Bus to route my signal first into BIOS, which is a really nice uh, amp modeling software. I'm using that with just a pretty straightforward clean tone. Just a nice sounding pre uh, preset. And then I have uh, Johnny connected in the effect slot, and I have it actually coming after bias. Now you can, of course, put it beforehand um, if you wish. I just prefer the sound of it set up afterwards, but you know, however you want to use it is fine. Um, okay, so we'll go over the main interface here. Um, if you're familiar with the other line of my apps, then you probably don't even need to watch this tutorial because you're already familiar, familiar with the interface. Um, my first series effects all use the same um, interface so it's you don't have to learn everything a brand new interface every time it's nice and reliable so if you already know the um, setup then you don't probably don't need to watch further but if you're new to my apps um, or just own Johnny then we'll go over that now so you've got four main XY pads here um, they're actually because Johnny's a stereo processor and um, you have full control over each channels um, effects they're set up so the left side is the left channel right side is the right channel um, and the effects control on the main main pan, uh, view here is pretty straightforward. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, rate uh, is controlled on the x-axis uh, horizontally, and that's the speed of your tremolo. So you can hear. Oh, I've got to un unbypass the effect. It's pretty straight. You know, pretty self-explanatory. It controls the speed of the tremolo effect. And then depth uh, controls how strong the effect is. So if I have it pretty low, it's you know pretty subtle effect. You can kind of just hear a little bit of a pulse here. And as I bring it up, it's a stronger pulse. And at full depth, it's like it's you know the really strong choppy tremolo. Um, right now I've got a pretty it's a fairly straightforward amp, kind of a classic amp tremolo setting. Um, the other uh, parts of the front interface here, the main interface, we have the link button, which um, links or unlinks the channel's controls. So right now I have them linked. You can see those move together. If I unlink them, and now I hope you're listening in stereo uh, with some headphones preferably, you can hear now I can control the channels uh, separately. So now the right channel can be much faster to the left. You can have it be a little subtler. So this is where you really can fine tune stuff and get some cool stereo uh, tremolo going, which is kind of the whole point of the app, instead of being just a you know normal basic tremolo. So um, that's those controls, pretty straightforward. Uh, the lower X Y pads, I forgot to go over that, but that controls multi wave shape and mix. Uh, Multi-wave shape is on the x-axis, mix on the y. Uh, but I'll go over those parameters in a moment because they make more sense to, to explain with the sliders. So the other buttons we have here, uh, bypass, pretty self-explanatory when it's on. The effect is not on. When it's off, the effect is on. Uh, mute is a momentary mute switch, so when I'm holding it down, it's muted. When I let go, it's unmuted. You can actually use that to do to make your own kind of choppy effects with manually as well, like a DJ um, cuts on a fader. Um, or if you need to, to mute something for a little bit, um, you know, without having to hold your finger down, you can just swipe left and it'll mute. So that's that for, that's that for those. Um, now right above that we have the um, presets, and it's again pretty self-explanatory. Scroll through, tap a preset to load it. And that's that. If When you've created a sound you want to save, you just tap the Save button. It says Tap to Confirm. Tap it once more. Type in the name of the preset and save. All right. Um, now we're going to go into Tweak Mode. And this gives you a little bit more control over the sound and finer uh, detail. So you can see we have the rate, depth, controls that we already saw. And, now, and that's for the main tremolo. And then we also have a shape uh, parameter. So let's listen to that really quick. I'll just turn the depth up all the way. Uh, what the shape does is let you tweak between um, softer and harder tremolo. So if I just 
kind of on zero right here. It's a, even though it's a strong tremolo effect right now, it's still uh, fairly soft. And as I bring shape up more, it gets closer to a square wave. Um, and then it's more of a hard gated sound. So that's pretty self-explanatory if you're familiar with tremolo. Um, and now where stuff gets a little bit interesting is the multi-wave parameter. So I'm actually going to unlink um, because it's easier to explain this to hear it on just one channel at a time. Uh, what multi-wave is, is it's um, extra modulation um, that's synchronized to the main rate of the tremolo. And it creates some cool patterns. So you can basically use it to create interesting... Um, rhythms, you know, kind of where the tremolo effect is basically creating the rhythm of whatever you're playing. Um, it's, you know, usually you're going to run, um, if you're using it on a synth or something, you probably play a pad sound or something like that, and then um, let the tremolo handle the rhythms. And same thing with guitar, you know, you could probably going to be playing a chord or something, and then just letting the um, tremolo effect create the rhythm of your riff or whatever you're playing. Uh, so we hear this right now, it's a pretty straightforward um, tremolo sound in both channels. And then as I bring up multi-wave mix in the left channel, you hear a little bit of extra pulses there. And I'll just bring it up all the way. Now you can hear some kind of cool stereo stuff going on if you're listening with headphones. And you'll hear those extra pulses. Um, in the left channel, so I'll just strum the chord a couple more times. And of course I can adjust the shape of the multi-wave modulation as well, so that'll be harder um, only on the multi-wave uh, modulation. So you can do some kind of, you can really want to experiment with the shape um, with the, and, and the mix level of the multi-wave parameters because you can do kind of a lot of cool stuff with it. It can be a subtle kind of extra, like almost reminds me of um, almost like ghost notes on a snare drum or something where it's like you kind of just sometimes feel it a little bit more than you hear it. Um, but it's a pretty cool effect. And, and then, of course, when you have it on more extreme settings, it's... Um, a dominating kind of effect where it's going to dictate the rhythm of what you're playing and um, but that can sound really cool especially if it's uh, you know clock synced to a MIDI track or something so that's that and then multi-wave pattern just selects the um, pattern that's played uh, the multi-wave pattern that's um, uh, of the modulation so if I strum a chord switch between them you hear the pattern change in the left channel there and then so you just you know choose different ones and uh, what I advise trying with this is um, it can sound pretty cool if you have it linked you know, as far as using the multi-wave, but I really like playing around, spending some time to really kind of sculpt a cool sound and um, use different multi-wave patterns on each channel. So you get some cool stereo stuff going on with that. And then really just kind of play around with the mix levels of that, play around with the shape of the main tremolo um, oscillator um, compared, you know, and also tweak the multi-wave shape, see how that works out. And then just uh, try it out and, you know, basically have fun playing around with it. So I'll show a couple of the presets that come with it um, that are more extreme settings. Uh, this is a, this one's called Fast Cuts and it's fairly obvious why it's called that. Uh, 
this one's more of a kind of electronic feel. <laughs> That sounds cool on synth and stuff like that. And you, you, you know, there's a million different ways you can create um, different kind of multi-rhythm or multi-wave patterns um, using those parameters. Uh, let's see. Before going to any other presets, um, uh, one thing. Let me go back to a basic amp tremolo setting here, and then tweak this. Um, Another thing about Johnny that's kind of unique is the uh, different multi, the different tremolo modes. So right now I'm in the classic kind of typical tremolo mode, but they actually have two harmonic tremolo modes. So stereo harmonic trem or mono harmonic, and then stereo harmonic trem two as well. So this sounds kind of like a phaser. This is a, a type of tremolo that was found on old vintage tube amps, um, and is usually you, I don't, I'm not aware of this in any software, um, at least that I've seen. Um, uh, usually only get harmonic tremolo either on those vintage tube amps or, um, you know, with some pretty pricey um, boutique effects pedals. But it's a cool sound. It's like, uh, sounds a bit like a phaser, but a little bit more subtle, um, kind of like a phaser slash univibe type of a sound. And I really like it a lot. <laughs> And then you also have um, stereo harmonic trim two, which is sounds a lot like fairly similar to a univibe. Slow that down a little bit. So you can play around with that. Try um, that. Just those different modes alone can uh, give you quite a big range of sounds. Uh, I think that covers all the main elements here. So we'll go ahead and go into the, uh, which you've seen me go into already. If you tap settings here, you have some extra controls. Now on the top part here, um, this is your input and output gain. So you know you can actually control the, the left and right channel input independently or if you don't have them linked like we are right now, then they'll uh, control each other, you know, they'll sync up. Um, and then you have, you can select your input. Uh, it'll tell you what you're connected to um, and your current sample rate. You could uh, choose stereo or mono input there. Um, and then we went over the outputs earlier. So if you want to do mono, just select one of the mono modes. Uh, a lot of guitarists might use mono depending on if they're going for the more classic uh, tremolo sounds. Buffer size, if you're running standalone, this lets you adjust the latency. Um, lower, li uh, lower sizes equals lower latency. Higher values equals higher latency. Uh, when you're being, uh, when you're using MIDI, you're going to choose your MIDI channel there. Just type in, or tap that and type in a channel. Background audio, if you're running Johnny standalone, then you can, you'll want to leave that on so that, um, in most cases, you'll want to leave it on so that you know, if the app goes into the background um, or the screen locks, you can cons it'll continue processing and not shut off. Uh, MIDI input, just use that to select if you want MIDI input or not. Bluetooth MIDI setup is iOS 8 only. Um, it's pretty easy to, to get set up, but I have a separate video that I've made for that, so be sure to look for my Bluetooth um, iOS iOS 8 Bluetooth MIDI video on how to connect that. But you basically just tap the Advertise MIDI Service button and then if you're controlling, if you want to control Johnny from your from a Mac running OS 10 Yosemite or a, um, another iOS device running uh, iOS 8 um, and you can control it over Bluetooth, then that's how you set that up. And that video goes into the other, um, you know, nuances of getting that set up. Uh, once we have MIDI uh, mapping set up, you can clear them there, but we'll go over that in a bit. Uh, you can see the left channel BPM sync and left channel dotted note. Uh, we'll go ahead and turn that on. And now you can see that the tremolo actually set to note value. So. Pretty cool. And of course, you can do that separately for the channels. Um, 
again for just quite a bit of flexibility. Uh, if you have dotted note on that lets the um, notes be dotted notes if you want. Sorry, I'm a bit tired, so I've just taken a little, getting a bit draggy at points here. Uh, tap tempo lets you tap in the tempo, uh, pretty self-explanatory, BPM, you can just tap there and enter in a BPM. Or like I said, if you're syncing to MIDI clock, um, you know, it'll determine the uh, BPM from there and sync to it. And then we have these two extra controls per channel, which are FM depth and FM rate. And what this does is it actually modulates, it's a, a separate oscillator that modulates the rate of the main <laughs> tremolo oscillator. So if you're not familiar with that kind of terms, probably just easier to show you what it sounds like. So right now, you can hear, actually I'm gonna turn it to regular tremolo so it's as clear as possible to understand. So you can hear, we've got a fairly straightforward tremolo speed there. And if I have FM depth up to 100% and then turn the rate up a little bit, now you can hear it's gonna spin up and back and forth, spin up and down, so. And you can control the rate of how fast it's doing that. So you can use that. Um, the depth is actually going to control how f how um, wide of a range it's going to sweep as far as the frequency of the main oscillator so if you can if you turn it down you can do some pretty cool stuff with that actually um, if you keep it fairly low so now you can hear um, it's not going to go all the way up to the maximum speed range and you can do it even more subtle than that where it just kind of wobbles around a little bit Okay, and then so you can play around with the settings on that and there's a preset uh, already in here called swing set that you know has separate stereo settings um, for the FM rate so you can hear how that sounds. <laughs> Another one that's pretty cool that demonstrates that is called Unsteady. So that covers pretty much everything. Uh, the only thing we didn't go over is MIDI, uh, MIDI control, and I will do that now. To use a MIDI controller with Johnny, um, we just have I've got a Arturia Beat Step uh, connected here, so I can set up its knobs to control parameters in Johnny. Um, you're going to want to tap the button to get into tweak mode, and then tap the Learn button here. Uh, actually, first tap Settings. Make sure your MIDI channel matches the device you're trying to control with and make sure MIDI input is turned on. So um, then you're going to tap the learn button here and it tells you that you're in MIDI learn mode now um, and to tap a slider that you wish to control via MIDI CC message and then turn the knob or slider on your MIDI controller to map that parameter. So it's pretty straightforward. You just tap, if I want to set this knob to control that slider, I tap that slider and turn the knob and you can see it now is set to CC10. Uh, same thing here. If I want to just go down the line. It's pretty straightforward to set up. And that's that. And you can um, assign those buttons as well. Um, and you can also assign these controls that are highlighted green here. So you can do uh, MIDI control any of those. Uh, and then you just exit learn mode and now the sliders, you can see the parameters will be updated by the knobs. And that's that.